Okay, today we're going to continue to share some of the things I've learned in all my years as a divorce lawyer over three decades. First, if you're going to make a video for your website or a commercial with a white dog, try and avoid doing it in a navy suit because you are going to be covered with white fur. Secondly, we're going to talk about how the family house gets treated in a divorce. Who has to move out of the house, who gets the use of the house, and how the house gets paid for. All of this is covered in the beginning phases of a divorce. One thing we know for sure, in almost all divorces, the couple who is getting divorced after all doesn't keep living together. Someone moves out, sometimes they both move out. So the best thing is for the husband and wife to agree on who's going to stay in the house and who's going to move out. But if they can't agree, then a judge decides. Occasionally, both spouses move out of the house because, for example, they're going to sell the house or they've been renting and then it's not a big issue. A lot of times, by the time someone has hired a lawyer to start a divorce, one of the spouses has already moved out. Then we really don't have to argue over it. So if the couple can't agree on who moves out of the house, then a judge will decide at a hearing early in the divorce called a hearing on temporary orders. Sometimes you hear these hearings referred to as show cause hearings, but it really is a hearing on temporary orders. The temporary orders will address other issues like children, custody and support, who pays the bills, whether there's temporary spousal support, injunctions. But one of those topics for temporary orders is definitely who gets the exclusive use of the house and who has to move out. Okay, so it's important to remember what we're talking about. The temporary exclusive use of the house f during temporary orders does not mean that the spouse who gets to stay in the house temporarily will be awarded the house at the end of the divorce. If the wife is granted the temporary use of the house, the house still may be sold or this house still may be awarded to the husband. Temporary exclusive use of the house, however, means that that spouse gets to use that house and the other spouse cannot just pop in, drop by, come by. It's almost as if it's not their house anymore even though they still own it. And that's a hard thing for people to get ad adjusted to. Folks who don't want to move out of their house, it can cause anger and cause a lot of emotions. But again, go back to the basic principle. Usually in a divorce, the people do not keep living together, so someone has to move out. Change is going to happen, and in this situation, if someone has to move out of the house, change comes earlier than some folks want it. But you have to deal with it and make the best of it and not get yourself in trouble or do anything to anger a judge that's going to hurt you in later parts of the case. So how does a judge decide who moves out of the house? Well, first and foremost, if there's children involved, most judges want the children to enjoy the stability and continuity of continuing to live in their family house. So whichever parent is going to get the temporary primary custody of the children usually gets to stay in the house with the children. That's why we lawyers tell people going into a potential custody case, if you can help it, unless there's violence or really bad behavior, stay in the house till we have that first hearing. Another factor that sometimes is considered is whether the house is separate property. If, for example, the husband owned the house before the marriage and it's his separate property, we all know it will be awarded to him at the end of the divorce. So a lot of times he will get to stay in the house no matter what the other factors are. Another issue is whether there, the house is being used for something like a unique home office or home business that would be hard to move whether there's a workshop in the back that one spouse uses for his or her work, or whether there's a handicapped spouse and the house has been modified for the person in the wheelchair. In that situation, obviously, in most situations, the judge would let the person in the wheelchair stay in the house. One thing we don't worry about is who's going to pay for the house, usually. The reason for that is, until the final divorce decree is signed, the couple is still married. That means the money each of them makes in their paychecks is community property. So a judge at temporary orders can make the other spouse help pay for the mortgage, help pay the costs of the house, or pay temporary spousal support. A lot of couples barely get by living under one roof, and so it's hard for them, really, 
hard for them to afford living under two roofs. If that's the situation and it comes up frequently, there's not much the judge or the lawyers can do because we can't print money for you. It's just something we have to figure out. Then you may look to see if there's a relative or a friend that someone can stay with. So finally, here's some tips for dealing with the house in a divorce. First, while you're still in the house, maybe before the divorce is even filed, go through the house with a video camera or your phone and video the entire house. Every room, every closet, every drawer, the garage, the backyard, the front yard. Slowly pan around and film every single thing that is in your house. That way, if you're out of the house for nine months and it's time to finalize the divorce, you can remember what you want out of the house. If you're going to mediation or court early in the divorce and you have to argue over what you get to take from the house, then you have that video to remind you what you want. The video can also help you if things start disappearing. And this happens, unfortunately, quite often in divorces. If the wife knows that leather ottoman is very important to the husband, when he comes to get it, it may not be there and she will say, I don't know where it is. I thought you took it. I don't know where it is. And when that happens, there's not much the judge can do. But if you've made a video record of what's in the house, you can control some people's tendencies to do kind of jerky things. Do make a list of what you want to take from the house if you think you're going to be one, the one moving. If you're going to be the one staying in the house, look around and make a list of the things you do not want them to take. One category of items that needs special consideration is those irreplaceable things of sentimental value. Think about what we do when a hurricane is coming and we have to evacuate. We don't take the leather couch with us, but we do take Aunt Tilly's watercolor that she painted 70 years ago that can't be replaced. Look around your house and if there's things of great sentimental importance to you or your kids that cannot be replaced if they, quote, disappear, then you might consider taking those items out of the house yourself before someone is ordered out of the house. Moving out of your house that you help pick out and purchase and decorate and remodel with all the memories of all the family life in the house can be really tough. It can be really hard if you don't want to leave and a judge is making you go. But everyone involved has to control their emotions, look at the big picture, and try and be as rational and objective as they can. And for gosh sakes, don't do anything ridiculous that's going to make a judge mad that will hurt you later in your divorce. So in summary, in almost all divorces, someone moves out of the house. A judge will decide if the spouses can't agree. The judge will consider who gets custody of the children, whether the house is separate property, whether there's special accommodations made for someone with a handicap, whether there's a home office or business in the house, but ultimately a judge will decide what he or she thinks is fair. Then you have to worry about what gets taken out of the house by the person leaving and what gets left behind. Try and make a calm, rational decision about this. Make a video of your house so you can remember what's in it and look at the bright side of things. If you're the one moving out of the house, you get to pick a new place. You get to buy new furniture. Divorce is not always the end of the world, and usually for most people, ultimately, it's the beginning of a new life. And for a lot of folks, it's a new life in a new house. <music>